Hello and welcome to Face to Face. My name is Godfred Akotobuafo. My guest today is celebrating his birthday, but wishes he could have brought home a far greater gift, an Afcon title. Unfortunately, it did not happen, but he left with his reputation perhaps enhanced even more than before. Mubarak Wakasu is my guest on Face to Face today. Mubarak, welcome to the show. Thank you. Very and a happy birthday. Thanks. You don't look too happy. It's been no. a while since the tournament ended, but I can see the disappointment is still on your face. Yeah, still finding time to, to recover from that. Ha, ha. Is it easy to get over something no, like this? It's not that easy, but life goes on, so we just need to, to keep working hard. Going into the tournament when you were coming down as an individual, before you joined the team, what was going through your head? What was the mindset going into this particular tournament? You know, it was like um, going to war. And we all know when you are going to war, you need to prepare yourself and looking ahead of winning. So our was was to, to win what we wanted, which was the, the trophy. But unfortunately, God did not give us um, what we were asking for. On a personal level, did you feel you were at your best? You had come off a really good season for Alaves in Spain. Where did you feel that on a personal level how you were playing as good as you had played in a long time? You know, that's what um, I'm always looking ahead to, to have. That's my job. That's what I'm doing. So I'm always like, I want to do my best to get what to get more than what I'm having now so that was um, that was what I have in mind and there are those who say Wakasu plays football angry is that is that true yeah uh, is it, it's deliberate I can say it's true but I'm I'm doing it with a reason and the reason is um, I'm looking for for a bright future and when you are looking for a bright future, at least um, automatically it gives you a chance to fight harder and harder. Is that, uh, has that always been your mentality as a young boy from Tamale? Yeah, since, since I started playing football, that's how I've been playing. So the Wakasu we see on the pitch and the Wakasu off the pitch, we should not confuse the two, no, two very different no, persons. Uh, outside the pitch, I'm, I'm different kind of person. I, I give people the opportunity to come closer to me, to also share, to, sh to also share my experience and to learn from them because it's not everything that I, I know or anything that uh, everything that I can do. So I also have people around me who learn from me, who I also learn from. I know it's a painful memory, this Afcon, but since it's the most recent, after that game against Tunisia, you went into the press conference and you were crying. What was going through your head? Okay, um, it was all about it was all about the the confidence Ghanaians had in us, and it was all about um, the sacrifices that we went through just to win the trophy. And at the end, we couldn't even reach far for people to think, oh, maybe. We've tried, but we did not get it. That was what I was thinking in me, and that was why I shared tears. Do, do, do you feel Ghanaians share the same level of pain that you share when you, since you've been back and you've listened, you've read what people say about the performance of the team? You know, um, normally I don't, I'm not kind of person who, who follows what people say. Although I do listen, but I don't follow it because at the end, in you, you know the, the reality. So the most important thing is to, to have what you think or what you have in you. But also, the, with the comments of people, you try to pick the ones you think you should have done, then to move on. The You've been playing AFCONS since 2013, which was your first in South Africa. You were a top goal scorer at AFCON. 
if I recall, I was in South Africa. I saw yeah, that tournament. Yeah. Your game has evolved a bit. You are a bit more defensive now. Is that also deliberate? What has changed? Because yeah. you were very, very offensive, taking shots. These days, those things don't really happen. Yeah, sometimes it depends um, the one you are playing with. You know, like I said, um, Thomas is more offensive than mm -hmm. I do. And always we need to, you need to get one in the middle to have the defenders. And as you can see, this AFCON was, was a difficult AFCON because the reason why I said that now everybody knows how to move the ball, mm -hmm. defend well. So whenever you, you are in the game, you need to read the, the tactics of the other team and to also know how to stand in the game. Did Ghana underestimate our opponents in that group? Benin. Somebody said, oh, Benin, they cannot beat Ghana. They cannot stand Ghana. To be honest, in our camp, we've never underrated any team. Because, as you can see, during the qualifiers, we, we saw what happened against Kenya and all those things. So it was a bigger lesson, a lesson for us. And to know that now football is not like before, when they say, when they say Ghana, Ghana. But now, as you can see, Madagascar and some few countries were, were in the Afcon, which they really surprised people. So they are full of surprises in, in the game right now. So I don't think we underrated any team. But after the disappointment of that Benin draw, you had Cameroon, which is a big team. It's almost like a local derby Ghana and Cameroon. What did you guys tell yourselves going into that game? Because post-game, the general consensus was this was a very good team performance, even though Ghana did not win. Okay, our mentality was to not to lose, but just to get a point or a point, which we really play good with our, with our mind. We did not follow what they were doing. We were doing what we can do to stop them. And like I said, we drew with um, Benin, which was, which was um, a difficult game and a difficult moment during the tournament. And going into the Cameroon's game was to just to have the team compact. Learn, we learn a lot from the first game. So, and we know, like we knew uh, Cameroon was a, a, a good side. So we have to find a way to stop them. And that was what we had in mind. And fortunately we got it. We did not lose against Cameroon, which we were looking up to win the last match and go through. That was the game you were man of the match in, the game against Cameroon, you were yeah. man of the match? No, uh, it was the uh, one Guinea Bissau. The you were man of the match in the yeah. game against Guinea Bissau. Tell me about that game. Did you know anything about Guinea Bissau going into that game? To be honest, um, in our group, they were they were the only team that I don't know anything about them until we watch their video before the game. So mm. that was where we get to know the their weak points and their better side. And to be honest, when we started the game, it wasn't easy. Mm. So we we managed to set to settle ourselves up and and go for them. You were man of the match in that game. You were man of the match uh, in the game against Tunisia as well. Did we think that Tunisia was a team that realistically stood a chance against us at this tournament? Yeah, I thought that game was um, <coughs> well, it was a bigger final game for, for us to, to penetrate in the tournament because um, we knew they were, they were a very good side and we were going to face difficulties. But in, in our concentration was to win the game. And we were like, the confidence was, it was there to win the game. But you know, football is it's some, something else these days. So and The penalty shootout, what is it exactly? Why can't we seem to win penalty shootouts? I, I think, um, <laughs> That one, me, I always call it um, gambling. Penalty shootout is a gamble game. Going to kick, maybe in your 
in your heart, maybe you are looking to put it on the right side or the left side, but getting to the ball with the, you know, it's, penalty is like one against one thing. And when it's there, there's always different mind and like different thinking. So that one, me, I always call it gambling and it's a lack. But it's a lack. Did, it, did it play with your minds when Tunisia made that change with the goalkeeper? Um, me, to be honest, <laughs> during that time, I, my mind was not there because mm -hmm. I, like, I was fighting for us to get a, a goal, not to go to the penalty. So that change, I did not see it. It was later that they told me that they have changed the keeper for the penalties. What are the lessons we've learned going forward? You are considered one of the elder states persons of the team, having been around for six years now, almost. Going forward, what are the lessons? I'm sure as a team you would have met and had a conversation. Yeah, I think um, we have been doing that. But um, in life, as you keep moving, there will be, there's always advantage and disadvantage. And you need to learn in those things. So me, what I think we should do is we, sh we should just leave everything behind, come back together, organize ourselves, and look up to what we have in front. How do you build the relationship between the players? It looks like on a personal level, there are people who will see Mubarak and say, oh, well, Wakasu, you play well for Ghana. But as a team, there, seems, there still seems to be a struggle to get Ghanaians to understand that you mean well when you are on the football pitch. Yeah. What I know is um, even <coughs> If someone tells me that I played good, I did not do it by myself. I was with my colleagues, my teammates. We were 11 in the game, and even we, we had people behind us. Even that, the other players that was in the bench, also the whole Ghana was behind us. So I think it, was, it wasn't individual thing, it was a teamwork. So if you tell me I played good, I'll tell you that the credit goes to my colleagues because they were part of what we were doing. You still see yourself uh, playing for the Black Stars going yeah, forward? To be honest, um, I have to take it because in me, I can be, I can be in Black Star without winning something. I need to win something before I stop. I know, to be honest, there are young ones coming and we have to leave a way for them to also to also continue, but we must set an example for them to come and continue. You are watching Face to Face with Mubarak Waka, so we'll take a break. When we return, we will delve into how it actually started for the young man in Tamale. How does a boy from Tamale find his way to Obuasi, then to Spain? How did that journey go? Okay, um, may I always say this? If, if I tell you that I knew I was going to be like this, then I'm lying to you. But it was all about hard working, sacrificing, looking forward to get what I want. And I've passed through with a lot of like different kind of people and all those things, different kind of players. But mine was to do what I want to do for myself. When it, comes to, when it comes to the team, I work as a team. When it comes to individual way, I do what I have to do to help myself to get a bright future. And it wasn't easy. You went to Ashko, then you went to LT, you went to Villarreal. Yeah. It looks like it's at Espanol that things really started for you. But by then you'd been in Spain for four or five years. To be honest, it wasn't an easy journey, but you know, like I said, it's just it's just about how you prepare your mind. Perhaps you can share a few secrets. How do you prepare your mind? There are a lot of Ghanaian footballers out there who go and come back very quickly. You have gone and stayed. To be honest, till now, that's, that's how I am. I put myself into the game. And when I'm doing it, I know I have, in, I have nothing behind. I don't know how to do anything apart from football. So that's... I know football is my life 
and that's how that's where I should protect my life. So whatever I'm doing in football, I make sure that I do it for myself. And if you if you love your life, you always go for a better thing for yourself. So and nothing good comes easy. You need to suffer again. When you are suffering, just make sure that you suffer today and the next day you'll be you'll be in a good way. Like I said, Espanol was good, but post Espanol, you went through a bit of a rough patch, if you would care to admit. There were a lot of movements around. What was going on with you? Okay, um, to, to be honest with you, um, that was what people think, and that was the mind of people. But in my side, yes, things were not like in Espanol. And the reason why people were saying that because in Espanol everybody used to see me, but what where I left to in Russia, mm -hmm. you went to Kazan. Yeah, Rubin Kazan. I think none of Ghanaians or a lot of people doesn't watch Russian league. So normally, if they are not seeing they, if they are not seeing you like before, that's what they would think. But things wasn't that bad like that. Although, whenever, wherever you go, you must face difficulties. Mm. And then you went to Celtic, yeah. as well as Scotland. Okay, so you should be a geography teacher. You've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How was my, coll you? my colleagues used to tease me. Yeah, my Spanish colleagues, they used to tease me that uh, you have been everywhere. You have them. But sometimes it's also part of the game. It gives you a chance to, to learn. Mm. So right now, wherever I'm going, I know what I'm going to face. There. You are at Alaves. Um, it didn't start too well, but you found yourself again and were one of the best players getting by the end of the season. Tell us about Alaves. What's the place like? You yeah, seem yeah. to have rediscovered. Uh, basically, maybe it's the blue and white. <laughs> Espanol was blue and white. Alaves is blue and white. <laughs> okay. Um is um, is a very good team, a small team which they care about the players. And before they will get you, they like they already know what you can do. So when you get there, they give you chance to also show them what you have. And to be honest, I don't think I had a, a difficult uh, moment in Alaves. Just that when they change our first coach, everything got. A Di bit difficult, but at the end, it was okay. So, I don't see, I don't really see the bad side. But this season, no, before, the, after this season, when I sat down myself, I could see that I did uh, better than the first season, which means I got a lot of opportunity to, mm -hmm. to play from the beginning. Has your game changed because I recall early in your career, Wakaso will say, they will say Wakaso is a walking red card, or a, walk, a walking yellow card at least, a walking suspension. We didn't see too much of that as all of us. Would you say experience has made you a bit more mature? Yes, of course, of course. Now um, I'm a bit old in the game, so at least I have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. And even sometimes my colleagues will say, hey, Wakaso plays five games without yellow card or maybe i maybe four yellow cards to be suspended they will, they will say hey, you use one yellow card to play like four matches without receiving a yellow card so but sometimes too it's a, it's a strategy okay. for the for the team okay you scored a goal with your right foot <laughs> I, I i thought you only used your right foot for walking yeah. But you scored. It doesn't happen often. What happened? Tell, walk me through that goal. What happened? Yeah, yeah, you know it was a rebound, so I have nothing to do just just to try with my my right foot. And when I when I when I shot, I got it. It was unusual, and it was so unusual that it became popular on social media for the fact that Wakasu had actually scored a goal. With his right foot. Even when when I sc when I scored that goal, my colleagues were saying that impossible. It's impossible. This is not normal. Which is <laughs> which I was like. Even the coach said to me, "Hey, this is not normal for you to use your right foot because during the training I've been trying to use use my right foot, but it doesn't come. 
but to score that in a game is, is something else. Maybe you should be trying that a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I would do. Now, I realize I've seen a couple of photos. On your cars, you have Kande. Yeah. Is Kande your mother or? That's my mother. It obviously plays a very significant role in your life, considering that you put her out there so proudly. Tell us a bit about her. Okay. Um, <clears throat> She's a special woman in my life since day one. She always makes sure that uh, I get whatever I want, which means when I was young, when I'm going to play a game, in the, in the evening, I would, I would tell her to, to wake up midnight and do prayers for me because the next day we are, we are having a game. And I could remember um, my my justified days with uh, Ayas. I that night I told her to to pray for to pray very hard for me because we are having a justified the next day. So I want I I want to be the best among my colleagues. And she said okay. So the the next day. The next day I was I was in the house and there was. It was a time to go for the justify. for the justify, and I was delaying. And she came out shouting on me, "Are you not going?" And what? So I was just running around. So he went and report me to my senior brother, the one you saw here. So he went and report me, and we all were running away from our our senior brother because he was the one that disciplined us when we are doing. Well. So my junior, my senior brother came in tell me, hey, what are you doing here? Go. So I thought I was late, but when I went to the, to the field, I was the first person. So we were there like 10, 15 minutes. My colleagues came in with the balls and everything with the coach. And the white, me the white man was even angry and he said he's not going to do it no more and blah 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 so the elders tried to convince him and he said okay even if i watch i will not pick a player because i'm no more interested so when we started the the justify i was the only player he picked among oh, yeah. my colleagues yeah and he was like he wants to go with me that day so i i can see why your mother is front and center for you that is it and she must be very proud of what you have achieved in yeah. your career and yeah. perhaps even more as a man not just as a footballer that is the that is the reason why i'm still under under e, under them because whatever i'm doing i still make sure that i talk to her and see her opinion but you know our mother sometimes they are something like that you just say okay but you know the better one too for yourself your brother you, talk, you spoke about your big brother who basically also played a fatherly role in your life. Your younger brother also plays. Yeah. Very similar to you. <laughs> Is it deliberate? <laughs> no, I think he started playing as a central defender. Mm -hmm. But when he went to Portugal, they, they moved him to play defensive role in the middle. No, he's doing good. You, you, you keep in touch? When yeah, you're away? Well, well, almost every day we are, we are on the phone. I also Actually. noticed you are very religious. You don't play with your faith. And you are very open about it. It's not something that you hide. Yeah. How important is that to your development? Yeah, I was grown up with it. When I was a kid, they used to beat us to, to, to perform um, uh, prayers and to do everything. So even when I left home, it was still in me. And I'm always proud to be that. So when you are proud of something, you need to show it to the others to learn. Maybe the younger, there are younger ones who are Muslims. Maybe they are not taking it serious. And if they see you there and you still maintain it, showing it to people that you are a Muslim, it can also help them to, to pick it up. Maybe it will help them to also reach where you are. And you keep a fine line between the public and the private. It's, you show what you want to show. How difficult is it 
maintaining a private persona, considering you are so famous. And Accra people might let you walk, but in Tamale, I know you can't walk in the streets. Yeah, it, um, me, I always want people around me. And you know, that's how we were brought up. And I'm still with my friends that I started with. So I always make sure that they will be around me whenever I'm in Ghana. And I also know what I went through. So sometimes I do feel it. I do feel it in me and I don't want the other ones to go through that. That is why sometimes we try to to help some of them to also achieve their aim. And apart from that, I don't think I have much, much private things to do because I always have my people around me so whatever i'm doing i discuss it with them but make sure that it will be, be it will be between us but it certainly must be hard when you are not in ghana when you are away it's you your family just that yeah that one is um it's not you know when you are outside you are there to work mm -hmm. and so there's nothing you can add to it you just need to concentrate and work when you are free when you come here you have chance to do whatever you want to do do your kids come to the pitch to watch you play when you're away? Yeah, they do. That is the reason why I said they, they asked me to bring the man of the match. They want Spain they want the man of the match trophy in it. Spain? Yeah, they want to see it. So they said when I'm coming, I should bring it. What do they tell you when they see you? What you do they criticize you? Uh, no, they, they, when I, after the game, when I call, they will just say, hey, Bob, they call me Bob. They say, Bob, you were, you were the man of the match. You actually did well. And the day I cried, they say they saw me crying for the first time. What happened? You know, they are kids, so they don't know what is going on. I said, oh, because we lost. Mm. Uh, any boys? You have boys? Yeah, I have three boys, two mm. girls. Any of them showing any signs oh, of all, talent? Almost all of them. There are two, the two boys are left like me. Oh, and, yeah. you passed it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they always wish to be like me. Yeah. And I want them to be more than that. So you've been mm -hmm. giving them small coaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when I'm going to training and they are not schooling, they follow me to, to the training over there. There's a conversation about money that a lot of people feel footballers don't make good decisions with money. You seem to have done fine. What advice do you give footballers who make money? Because the reason I'm asking you this is you made money early. You were very young. You left Ghana when you were 17 or so. Yeah. So you made money early. And you've been on the same trajectory for a very long time. How do you manage that? Okay, me... What I believe is... There is life. And money is just by the way God decides to give who He wants. But when you are when God gives you, that doesn't mean that it belongs to you alone. There are people behind you. Maybe because of them, that is the reason why God gives you that opportunity. Me, my policies, I don't use my money where it's supposed to, not to use. I use my money where I have to. And that is the reason why when I'm praying to God, I pray to God to tell him, yes, I need money. But when you are giving me money, give me the good one. The money that I can control, not the one that will control me. I hope you understand yeah. what I mean. So, me, I can't tell how I use my money, but I always make sure that I make good use of it and the people around me will also benefit from it. You've spoken about, we, we had this conversation about you going to a lot of places. I know Spain has been good to you, but is that the best league you've played in? So far, it's the best league for me. What is it about? How you look across the water and see England. A lot of people talk about the English league. Uh, your style, some might say, is almost English. Yeah, that's what people are telling me. But I haven't been, have been get the opportunity to play there. So right now I can say, okay, I need to be in England by force. 
until I get the opportunity. But what is it about the Spanish game? What makes it good? Okay, you can see the, the when we are playing, you can see there is space. We play with more technique, mm. with the ball. The ball moves more than the human. You understand? So, and I've been there for so many years. So I understand. I understand the style of uh, style of play. Uh, are you aware that there's always added interest when you came up against a Messi or a Ronaldo, just to see how you would perform? How is it like those ones? They are the ones Ghanaians like to talk about. Yeah, let's um, talk Messi first. No, to be honest with you, they are they are special in football. That one, that one, I can't hide. It. I can't hide from it. But when you are in the field with them, it's it's a business time, so mm -hmm. you get no time to watch what he's doing unless you face him. When you face him, he can do what he can do, or you can also try to stop him. That's it. You look at the. You see a lot of. You have an academy system in your team. I'm sure a lot of academy, uh, the teams in Spain have reserve teams. And then you look at the development of the game, because I want to talk about the basics. You started from grassroots football here. What are we not doing right in terms of closing the gap? We have the talent, but they seem to understand the game much better and teach it better than what we do here, even though we are naturally more talented. Normally, eh, what I've seen in the Europeans, they forced to be footballers, but they are not footballers. Mm -hmm. And back here, we have the talent. It's natural. Mm -hmm. But it's about how to maintain it, how to progress with the talent that we have here. Because the facilities that they, they have over there and the way they take care of their players is, is much different here. Yes, we don't have it, but I think there is a way to, to do and get it all. There is a way to do, to show our talent or to make our talent go high. If, if you were coaching yeah. in, say, Baolesi Park right now, what would be the things that you would teach that you don't see being taught now? You know, football is... It's not about what you normally do in the pitch. It's about how you psych yourself up. So it's mental? It, yeah. It doesn't matter the pitch. The pitch you play. It's about how you want to work and mm. where you want to be. That's an interesting uh, dimension you've brought to the world. So mental strength is a key element to we making all, the progress. To be, like you said, we have been in, in the same Pitch. I've played in the same pitch, and now I'm in, I'm playing in in a grass. And when I come to vacation, I still play in the same pitch. Mm -hmm. But when you see me playing, it's like I just started again. So that the thing is in me. I know what I went through to become like this. When I'm with them, I need to show them the the attitude mm -hmm. to also get there. But why is it so hard for us to get the attitude? Because like you're saying, the young ones there are being forced to become footballers. That takes a certain level of mental strength. Because they easily get what they want there because they are already there. And we, are, we want to go there. That's the difference. But also the time they get for the players too. Mm. And the facilities that they have there helps them easy but me my belief is whatever you have in your hands belongs to you is yours so even if we started playing in the if we are playing in a in the sun or anything or we are training like one o'clock two o'clock it's, it's hot and that's ours so you just need to work to be better that is what you have. If you, cannot ch if you cannot change it, then work on it to go high. Interesting perspective from Mubarak Waka. So I want to talk about coaching. Because I brought you to the Black Stars. Yeah. What is the relationship like, you and him? I can't hide it from people. He's, a, he's like a father to me. Mm. No, there were, there were rumors 
a report about two years ago that you had fallen out. I will tell you the truth. When that happened, I called him myself to ask him what is going on. He told me that there is nothing going on, just that he wants to see one or two things. That's what he said to me. And you understood? Yes. Before he came back to Black Star, we were in contact. We were mm. talking to each other. When he was in Sudan, we were talking. So in my relationship with him, okay, I picked the relationship in football, but later it was a different relationship. It wasn't about football, football, football. We talked to each other. I tease him because he knows that we tease each other. So I tease him always. He also tried to tease me. So it was like we joke, we joke, but when it's serious, we, we talk serious. Mm -hmm. So the like when I heard that, I called him and I asked him, oh, Coach, what is going on? This is what I heard. And I, I did not ask him, why didn't you invite me? You did not ask him? I did not ask him that. What I asked him is what I was hearing. And he said, no, that's not true. He just want to see one thing. He also asked me what he heard and I said, okay, that was it. Were you bothered at that point? No, I, yeah, I'm a human. At least I should, I should be asking myself, questions why is he doing that or why am i not there do you get worried or upset when you hear the levels of criticism that he goes through with the general public you seem to know him better yeah Ghanaians look at him from a different side me what i can say is <laughs> what is going on right now is part of football so there's no way, even if you, if you talk bad about me in football, I'll never reply you because it's my job. I know what I'm doing. You are there watching me. So you, you, you are using what you've seen in me to talk, but you don't know what I'm doing inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you spoke about a new generation. We saw some of them. Like at six years ago, you were the new generation. In fact, let me ask you this one. You came with some crazy haircuts, Wakaso, in 2013. You were known for crazy haircuts. What happened? <laughs> Before I move on to my desk, I cannot forget this question. I will tell you the truth. Eh? 2013, you had a mohawk and something. Yeah, I wanted to do something. But the, the person who did my hair, which is Abiba, the one they call Abiba Locks. Yes. So she was the one who... <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? What did she do? <laughs> but that wasn't the, that wasn't the plan. That was the reason after the game, I took it off. I, I wanted to do something else, and um, ah. she she also. <laughs> what I didn't she know I got it But you followed it up with other hairstyles until you got yeah. to this one. Yeah, because um, the hair was not there again to to make it. So I was <laughs> just doing by hard to finish the to, the to finish the tournament and take it off. <laughs> interesting that you have decided to review to us because you know there was a, a list put together by um, an international magazine on yeah, the craziest hairstyles yeah, in world I saw football. It, I saw it. It was. It, it, I think I saw it on the internet too. Yeah, yeah. So you looked at it and you laughed. They said, "That but you have killed me." Even sometimes my children, they they they, they laugh. <laughs> they they used to, they used to laugh at me. But again, let, let's talk about the young ones. Now you are no longer that boy. You are the man, Mubarak. I'm still a boy. Eh? Yeah. It's your birthday. You're no, the, the age says you are no longer a boy. Yeah. <laughs> but the body inside is still a boy. <laughs> you have young players coming. How, how do you go about the process of telling them that this is how it is done when you wear the national colors? Because I remember prior to the AFCON, I put out a tweet where I said, you might not be the most talented player in the national team, but I feel you are the most important player in the national team. And this was me two weeks before the AFCON. the AFCON started. And I repeated the statement after the AFCON based on your performances. How do you assimilate that kind of attitude to, you know, Samuel Owusu and the Yadom, the young ones who are coming? Because like you're saying, you are still a boy. It's not like you are 30. Yeah. How do you pass that attitude on? 
You know, um, even if you get a chance to talk to that boy, um, Samuel Usu, mm. uh, Andy. Andy, and uh, they know how I talk when it comes to this kind of um, decisions. Like some rules who like this. Me, whenever I'm going to talk to you about football, I look where you play. And I will take my time to look your behavior before I talk to you. Some rules who like this. I always make sure. Here not you. I always make sure that I will let them know that what they have in, in their faith, I don't have it. So I will hustle for them and they will make good use of the poor. Mm. because that's what they have and as a team or as a nation I get my part to play everybody gets his his part to play so actually like this he always know what I can do for him and I, I always know what I actually can do for me mm. hold on there that means you had a bit of a worry when his injury came no, to be honest, I will not hide it from you. It worries me a lot. I, w I went to him several times to ask him, at you try and see if you can play. But I could see that he cannot. But it doesn't matter because I'm always was there. Mm. Although, why am I insisting in at you Because he's an experienced player. Mm. And sometimes we need that, that kind of players when it's, when it's reached to a certain point. So, and some Usu too is a good player. Even the other Usu, uh, Kobna. Kobna Usu. Yeah, I was going to ask you about him. He's in Spain. Yeah, he's in Spain. And I used to talk to him a lot. He and Usu then. And is, he, is he as good as they say he is? I will not lie to you. He's a good player. From what and you I see like, in Spain. I like him. Yeah, I like him. I like him. I like his style of play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just that, you, you know, sometimes it's not everything that you get it the way you want. But that doesn't mean that he's not a good. He's a very good player. Mm. You think he's 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 on his he way to making it to big. Be, he have a future to be in the Black Star team. Mm. Yeah. I'm asking this because this season you might meet him more than yeah, normal because apparently maybe. he's been promoted to Leganes. Yeah, maybe. So maybe you might yeah. meet. Speaking of which, reports are that you might we might see you in the Champions League because you might end up somewhere else. That's what no comment. That's what people are saying. So let's pray for the, <laughs> let's pray, let's pray for the best. Is it's a good sign, but let's just pray for the best. We will take our final break, and when we return, I'll ask him a bit about his family. He has them all over his arms. You are welcome back. Now, Mubarak, is it is your life always about football? Me, I have nothing to do. No football. So off season, what do you do? with them training you see them going mm. yeah that's what we do we are together eat together train together love together that's all when we decide so for you to football is 24 7. that's me and i was when i came in i was surprised you were watching football and i'm asking this because i realized in my association with footballers a lot of footballers don't like watching football i, mean, I like watching football a lot yeah, it helps you to learn. Hmm. Yes. Do you have specific teams you watch, or you just watch? Me, I watch teams? every football because in 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 the game there are, there are quality players, and there are some things that you don't have in you, so you can see them and and learn from them. Did you have a favorite team growing up? Yeah, me, wherever God puts me, where that's where I want to. So be. you've always liked every team. Me, uh, if you come and it's good for me, I'll go. To be honest. That is your mentality. That's my mentality. Because I need to enjoy what I'm doing to also gain from it. So when you come and I think it's good for me, I'll go. We've arrived at a place in our team where, in our football for that matter, where there seem to be a lot of Tamale boys who are doing well. Yourself, Baba, Waris. A lot of them out there who... And all of them, all of you seem to be in the same age bracket. Did you know each other growing up, anyway? Yeah, um, why is, for example, why is not say, he's not a friend to me? He's, uh, he's like a brother to me because mm -hmm. uh, we are related. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Baba, I met Baba. The first time I met Baba was in Blackstar. 
because oh, okay. he's, he's, he's young. He's younger. Yeah. But when I was in Tamale, when I was playing in Tamale, I did not know anything about him. I only heard about him when he was in Kotoko. But the first time I saw him was in, was in Blackstar. And what is happening in Tamale? A lot of these young boys are coming through the system. Like in the 70s, 80s, everybody knew if you want a good football, let's go to Tamale. Went a bit down, but if you look at the flavor of the month at the moment, it looks like, yeah, the ones who are coming up again seem to be coming from your part of the woods. Maybe, maybe we have, we have been an example to them, mm -hmm. I think. Because when we, when we go to Tamale, we are always with them, we play with them, so maybe they are feeling it. And I think that's why they are lifting up again. How was it like for you to see Baba back on a football pitch? Wearing yeah. the national colors after so long. Yeah. It was so nice. And that was what we all wanted. And as you can see, when he came back, he, he, he showed it to the public that he still have it. I see you like your ink. I can see a lot of ink on your hands. Uh, it's all about my family. That's so, so walk, walk me through. I see Mustafa. Who is Mustafa? That's my firstborn. Mustafa is your firstborn? Yeah. How old is he? He's 11. He's getting to 11 right now. And then I see Abdul Aziz. Yeah, that's my third. He's the, he's the third boy. Yeah. And then uh, Huzaifa. Huzaifa. He's that's a second, girl. Yeah, he's the second one. Okay. Then what else do I you have? I have um, Farihan. Farihan here. Yeah. Who's Farihan? That's my my second last born. Okay. And the, the last born is here. Insan. Yeah. What does Insan mean? Uh, it's, it's like a, a, a chapter in, in the Quran. Okay. Yeah. And then I see you have like a compass. Yeah. Somewhere there. Yeah, that's my direction. It gives me direction to move. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. And then you have the five stars. That's how, the, how did that one come about? That's the kids. So all the kids are the stars. Yeah. Okay. And then I see, show me this one. This. Okay, this is your mother. That's my Hajia wife. Kande yeah. Nabuzu. That's Nabuza. That's my wife. That's your wife. Yeah. How easy is, has it been for her? Or how difficult has it been for Nabuza? No, I started everything with her. In Tamale? No, I met her in Obuasi. Or oh, when you went to our school? Yeah. Her. That's, been a, that's a really long time. Yeah. So she knows you inside out. Uh, I've been with her since day one. I'm asking this because it's not easy coping with somebody who moves from place to place. Might not be around all the time. Yeah. Half the season he's not here. Might be injured. Goes through moods. You don't know when he's happy, when he's sad. You know. She must be some special woman. That's what. That's why I'm saying it's all about understanding. She knows what I'm doing, and she knows the kind of work I'm. I'm doing so she doesn't bother herself when it comes to things like that. She knows that I'm always there for her and she she's always there for, for me. What's really important is to take good care of the kids. That's mm -hmm. it. You have a new captain as well for the national team. Somebody you are very close to yeah. as well. Andre. Yeah. Are you what did you make of that? What should Ghanaians expect of your brother? Yeah. You and I know what he has done for for the nation. But you know him better. You know him personally. No, but you you guys knew him before I even met him. Am I lying? Well, we know him from the TV. Okay. You know him from sitting one on one. What I know, what I know is he's a fighter and he always wants to win something, and. We we are all behind him, not even me. We are all behind him because he 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 was a good captain to us. I'm not saying that the other captains were not. No, good. they are all good. But this is it. This is his time. Mm -hmm. So and 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 there's a new time coming because <sighs> CAF will not allow you to forget that. Afcon just ended. They've announced Afcon qualifiers. That's it. So that's why I'm saying that he's a guy who is planning to, who wants to win something. So he's already in plans to. But how do you qualify. pick yourself up from something like what just happened 
to say I'm going to play another Afcon qualifier. You know, just walk us through. Bro, that is the reason why I <laughs> said we have the different kind of people in this life, and that is the reason why we are not doing things alone. Mm. When we, that is the meaning of team. Team means when it's bad, it's bad. When it's good, it's good. We try to help each other. Since we don't have different mentalities, <coughs> when something happens, some people can stand it, some people cannot, some people can just bring something out to to move everything around. Mm -hmm. So that I think <laughs> we are talking to each other to forget about what happened and pick up because <laughs> there's another tax uh, around the corner. So we cannot keep thinking what we don't have in the hands again. So we should pick up what we, we want to have. And uh, in summation, before we wrap this up, I always ask this of my sporting guest. It's easy to say, I've always wanted to be a footballer, but was there anything else you wanted to do if you had not played football? Was there anything you were good at? No. For you, you always knew I was going to be football. I can't say I was, I was bad in school. I wasn't bad in school, but my mind was to, to play football. And I do run away from school because of football. Mm. I do run away from Makaranta because of football. There was a time I was, we were playing coast game, which was a tough game. And my father came in to beat me because I did not went to Makaranta. So for you, it's always been. So everything is about football. You've had no regrets about no, the decision. No, not at all. Made. Not at all. Well, thank you very much, Barak. It's been a pleasure uh, hosting us in your lovely home with oh. your brothers all around. <laughs> You're always welcome. Yeah. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my chat with Mubarak Wakaso as much as I did. Um, he says we should wait and see what happens next uh, with his career. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Face to Face. My name is Godfrey Akutobuafo. Have a good day.